In spring of 2022, we were lucky enough to be in Arizona to see one of the rarest birds in the country, a pine flycatcher. While on its own, this difficult to identify flycatcher of Mexico and Central America generated tons of intrigue in the birding community. The story behind its original finding made it even more fascinating. We caught up with our friend Chris Rohrer, who was instrumental in helping us know where to go to locate the flycatcher to discuss how this bird was first discovered, as well as the fanfare that followed. Today we are joined by our special guest Chris Rohrer, a birder and guide from the Tucson area and a part of the Tucson Audubon Society. So Chris, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. This is, this is really exciting. And uh, we're here to talk specifically about the pine flycatcher and some other stuff in Arizona because we had a great time trying to track down this bird and there's actually a very interesting story behind it and the fact that it's so rare. So Chris, would you like to speak a little bit more about how this bird was initially found first? Well, I, initially this, for the second record of the pine flycatcher was accidentally found by a recording in eBird and one of our professional bird guides that we have here, Chris Benish, who's an amazing person and, and guide and knows his birds pretty well, was listening to some of the audios on the eBird list, I think back in April 11th, when that report was submitted. And he heard um, what he thought was a pine flycatcher. And so he went back uh, to follow up on that bird in that location. He, he contacted the person, asked them about, you know, can you tell me more about where you saw this bird? And he, he went back to the location at Rose Canyon up in uh, Mount Lemon, uh, at, right outside of Tucson. And he went up there and he was able to confirm that the pine flycatcher, it was indeed a pine flycatcher. The common flycatcher up there is the Cordilleran flycatcher. They breed up at that elevation. So it's very often uh, overlooked, the pine flycatcher, I think, uh, because most people assume that it's the more common courtier and flycatcher. And they're very similar looking uh, in appearance. So that's why, you know, you don't really pay attention to the vocalizations. You kind of know, oh, it's, that's a courtier, and, you know, but it wasn't, it was a pine flycatcher. It, it is officially the second record in Pima County in Arizona, which, which is rather exciting. So how long was it that they didn't know it was there that it was there for? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, I think it was there for a month before Chris actually saw the report. And then uh, when he heard it, he thought, well, we'll try it. And so when he went up there to check it, it was one month later that he was able to confirm that record. Now, normally it's the female that comes in, what we found here anyway, from the first record back in, I think it was 2016. And uh, that, that was in May, so we don't know how long that flycatcher was there, but she was building a nest. And so this, this one may be doing the same thing, we don't know. But it, they, it'll be interesting to see how long this pine flycatcher stays, because last one left around July was the last time uh, people got to see that one. And so we'll see if this one sticks to around July. And then if it disappears, we'll know, you know, there's some sort of, I don't know what you want to call it, like, like pattern there that uh, we can maybe establish. But right now, the bird's still up there, still doing the same thing. And it's favoring a certain group of uh, pine trees that are up there. I think we know which group of pine trees that is, actually. Yeah. When we, when we went, people gave us the coordinates. They're like, yeah, we saw it in this exact place. It went to the exact same trees over and over again. And we went up there and we waited for a while and we were about to leave and be like, well, I guess we didn't see it. And then Derek's just like, I think that I have it right now. And uh, yeah, I'd yeah. kind of just like sat down on a log and I was just like, well, I'm tired. I'm just going to sit here. And it just happened to go in the tree kind of right in front. And um, it started calling. And that was the, th the thing is because earlier birders were like, it was on the same branch calling and then it would come back to the same area. So that's kind of how we deduced um but we got the very like treasure map style directions of like yeah just do the 10 paces north and then it's on your right side and this and this and this and the reception yeah. was really spotty so it was kind of like coordinates were useful sometimes and not others but it was really right. cool. yeah i believe it was like behind campsite 64 62 something like that 
uh, we took some people up last weekend to go see the bird. It was a lifer for them. And, uh, you know, you there's quite a few Cordier and flycatchers. So you hear that chitty, chitty, and very happy, perky call. And then there's that one call that's different from the rest that you're just like, ah, there it is. That's it. That's the one. And so we went up, <laughs> we climbed up the steep hill. Uh, it, uh, we sat there. There it was. It was flying around. And then we were able to get some recordings and pictures of it. It's like a, how did I write it down? It was like a cheek, a cheek. Something like it's mm -hmm. it's it's very different from the Cordier or the Pacific Slope flycatcher call. So, but yeah. do you do you know if a lot of people have been recording the more common flycatchers, thinking it's been the pine and eBird? Like, has that been an issue? No, I no, I don't think so. I think you know what's really cool about eBird and what's cool about Pima County birders or just Arizona birders in general. I think as a group, since I've started birding, at least. I think we've grown as a community, as a team together, where we learn together. And so I think as people are learning more and more about, for example, the pine flycatcher, because they know the Cordier and flycatcher call very well. They know the elevation that it's at. They know all those things. But I think the more we know and the more we observe the, this pine flycatcher, the more we might be able to maybe pick out potential candidates for pine flycatchers in the future. You know, and I really really am lucky to be around a lot of amazing people who know how to ID birds and they do a great job at it. And we get some very strange birds here sometimes. And uh, it's pretty exciting. You know, Arizona birding is top notch, some of the best in the country. So I, I'm really lucky to be surrounded by those people. Um, I think the biggest confusion that happens uh, with people that are coming to bird here in Arizona um, is that they can't ID, you know, they don't know where where Cordier and Flycatcher starts or where Pacific Slope Flycatcher starts. And so sometimes when they see the, the bird up on the mountain, you know, they'll say, oh, that's Pacific Slope Flycatcher. And they go, wait, no, or is that a Cordier? And at a certain elevation, I think the elevation, I gotta look at my notes here, says somewhere 6,000 to 8,500 feet is where the Cordier and go. And so where that pine forest starts, that's where the Cordier and come for the summer. And then the Pacific Slope prefer the lower elevations, like the, the lower foothills and and riparian areas around the grasslands, you'll find them. That's what was interesting to me that you actually told me, Chris, when you were kind of telling me some info on the places to go, is that it's all about elevation there. Because, you yeah. know, you don't really think about that in the Midwest so much. Like, we don't have to think about, like, our elevation, you know, here is this much more, so there's going to be a different set of species. But when we were going on Mount Lemon, it was, you know, every little twist and turn all of a sudden it's a thousand feet more. And you yeah. could see when we pull out the stuff that was at the bottom of the mountain was vastly different than the stuff at the top. Absolutely. Yeah. And so you could, we, we've done studies of our owls up there uh, during our surveys with Tucson Audubon when we do our fundraising. And we, we found out the owls here, the Western screech owls go so far. And then where's the line between Western screech owl and whiskered screech owl, you know? And then where does spotted owl start? And then where does Northern Sawwet? We have a small population of Northern Sawwet up on the top there around Summerhaven. Um, so it's really exciting stuff. You, you, you just, and then the warblers too, the warblers all change as you go higher up. And then you got the red-faced warblers and the olive warblers, you know? And then you turn the corner and you got Mexican jays, but below them, at a lower elevation, you got Woodhouse's scrub jays. So it, it's, it's, it's fascinating stuff. Yeah, for sure. And a question I have about it, because we first heard about the pine flycatcher pretty closely after it was reported, actually, because a lot of people, or at least some people in Wisconsin, are big time chasers, like around the country, not just in the state. So um, a friend of mine was like, oh, you're going to Tucson area. You got to go check out the pine flycatcher. It's calling up a storm, you know, like well before we even got to Arizona, we had already heard about this thing. Yeah. How has the um, crowd, I guess, of people from all over the country been to see this bird since it's so rare for the country? It, it's, it's a hit, you know, um, I think the first record you had like everybody, everybody on the ABA bird, you know, company going in there getting their bird for their ABA list. Second time around, it's still been busy. Every day there's a crowd of people up there. The first initial days that this, the second sighting was seen uh, was a lot. There were a lot of people uh, looking at this bird. Uh, the day we went last week, uh, there were maybe five or six, seven of us. So that's about, that's about the average every day 
generally we tend to stay off the mountain on the weekends because there's a lot of people that go up for the cool air because it's so hot down here right now with the desert heat but uh so but during the weekdays it's you know about seven eight people and then we get about you know four or five reports every day on the on the pine flycatcher on ebird i think that really helped us that other people were there too because it's always when you go to a spot, it seems like it'll be easy. Like, oh yeah, it's near Rose Canyon, you know, near this campsite. And then we got there and we're like, this place is uh, pretty expansive. <laughs> so it was, you know, we, every so often we'd run into a bird or, hey, have you seen the pine flycatcher? Yeah, I saw it in this spot and we get more details. Yeah, I saw it, like Derek said, 10 paces south of this spot, you know, whatever. So that really helped us that there was still fanfare around it. But it's pretty cool that people from all over the country are coming to that one specific place to see that single bird. I think it speaks a lot to uh, Arizona birding. It's exciting. I have a friend in Wisconsin. I'm from Two Rivers originally. And um, one of my friends who lives out of out of Manitowoc, uh, he tells me, he goes, I can't believe there's so many birders in Arizona. Like when you go see a bird, there's like always a huge group of people to see this rare bird. He's like in Wisconsin, you're lucky if you get, you know, a few people, you know, to, to even be in the same spot while you're birding but here here it's a whole different thing there's crowds of people and they're all doing the same thing they're all birding together and and i think i think for the most part people are super friendly and uh really helpful and i really really love that about the birding community here i'm not so crazy about the competitive stuff that happens but but it is cool to be around that energy you know people that just want to see birds so about the pine, if it's still hanging around, do you have any yeah. recommendations for people going to see it? Yeah, so follow the directions. Um, I would say, you know, you right now it's still hanging around in the same location. The, the directions sometimes are a little bit vague, but you basically go down to the end of the loop there where the campground is and where that sign says 62 to 64, that's where you, you park your car a little bit before that off to the side. And then walk behind that sign and then there's a steep hill now you can do it that way you get your 10,000 steps in for the day and do your exercise up the hill listen and know the call okay because the the courtier is the chitty you know and this one you know it's got a you know a little it's, it's a different call so if you can hear that and it's soft it's not very loud you'll be able to pick that out real quick now it says that group of pines. Everybody puts in that description. It's in its favorite stand of pines. Well, sure, but what if you are coming from out of town and you don't know where that favorite group of pines is? You know, so um, you know. Again, you can look for other people help. They had to ask for help, but if nobody is there, just listen. I think that's that's what my I use my ears a lot when I bird, and that's how I was able to pick it out. I was climbing up the hill and I was about to give up, and then I heard that call. And then I got excited and I said, guys, guys, come up the hill. Now there's a better way to get in for you know, the, the not so active birder, but you could go in through the Willow Canyon Road in the back there, but then you don't really have definitive landmark markers, you know, to figure out where to stop your car. And it's just basically, there's a road right behind where this pine flycatcher is hanging out. And you could just walk over this little ditch and there it is. Um, but, you know, I, it's, it was easier for us just to go to the campsite. And plus there are a lot of really great birds there too, a lot of great warblers and things like that. So we were able to, uh, we were able to find it, no problem. So we just, we went right behind 62, 64 campsite. You go up that hill, be careful on the pine needles so you don't slip, maybe have a walking stick with you bring water because you know it's arizona and you need water and you need to stay hydrated everybody says oh i'm good i'm good i'm good but nobody really does it and then they get a headache at night and they get dehydrated so make sure you have your water with you go up that hill listen for that call that 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 little chip and then it's different from the courtier and then make your way and then it's there just be patient it it's not going anywhere at least for i could say maybe for another week i think and then maybe it might disappear. I don't know. I don't know. Don't don't quote me on that. But from what we saw from this last pine flycatcher, it took a while for it to take off. Chris, how many times have you seen it now? I have seen it three times. Okay. And and I and I think I probably heard it in Mexico. But I will tell you this. I'll tell you this. The first time 
it was like you guys. I was like, I didn't know quite, like I was in the movie theater when I got the report. There's a pine flycatcher. I'm like, what is that? What is what does a pine flycatcher look like even? Then I looked at it I'm like, oh, it's one of those Western flycatcher types. And then, so I was like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to ID that thing, you know? Um, I didn't know the call very well. I didn't know anything. So I we went together in this huge monster truck to go down into this Aliso Canyon to get this bird. And it was quite quite a detailed uh, group of uh, people with, with a plan. We had to go down into this canyon to get it. And the, the road was terrible. Um, and we needed four wheel drive, all that stuff. And then, then we got there and then I, again, it was a call that was different from the rest. And I was able to pick it out with my ears and then I, I was able to see it. The second time now, or the third time, uh, I see it and I go, that's it. And, and, and if I'm out in the field now, if I'm down in Mexico or if I'm here and I hear it, I'll go, that's the pine flycatcher. I do have to point out earlier today, he said that identifying Western flycatchers was fun though. So he might be in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I've heard so many birds that we, you know, when you're bored and you're in between, you know, you're driving from one place to another in Arizona, it's, you know, you got to drive all these sometimes hours to get to from A to B. Uh, but you'll, you'll have these discussions that'll pop up. And one of them is the Western flycatcher. They shouldn't be split. They should be put back together again. That call isn't really good. You know, the, the Pacific Slope flycatcher is said to have one note. It's chidi. And then you have the the uh, the Cordier flycatcher has two notes and it's chidi. And everybody says it sounds the same. It does. And you know, up in Phoenix, for example, um, they're not sure if it's Pacific Slope flycatcher up there only. Uh, but I, they did, they weren't counting Cordier and flycatchers up on this this higher elevation up in Maricopa County for a while. But down here, we definitely have Cordier and flycatchers up at that elevation. But then when you go down, of course, it's Pacific Slope. But anyhow, it's they 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 can be very tricky. But that's one of the birds on our tour for the uh, Southeastern Arizona Festival that we have with Tucson Audubon uh, in August. We we go and we ID Pacific Slope Flycatcher. I think one of the groups actually goes up to Rose Canyon um, and then they, they'll see the Cordier Flycatchers up there. And the nesting is very similar too. So that the Pine Flycatcher, the uh, Pacific Slope Flycatcher, the Cordier Flycatcher all look very similar to each other. And that's why it makes it really difficult to ID them. Um, and if you don't hear the males calling, you can't distinguish the species apart because they kind of all look the same. I will say the pine flycatcher is a little bit more gray. It's got a little brighter orange, you know, on the bill. But for the most part, you know, it's it, you have to hear them uh, to ID them. What's so maddening about them is because you can be, like we have over here, you know, we the willow and the alder flycatcher. Yes. And it's kind of the same thing where you can get a 100% look at one like two feet away from you. But if it's not going to call, then you just have to mark it as trails flycatcher or flycatcher species. So Yes. Yeah, definitely. Well, the the pine flycatcher is an incredible story. And thanks so much, Chris, for telling us about it. I got one more question for you. We have a lot of younger viewers who are kind of either getting into birding or they're just birding, you know, from a younger age. Do you have any advice for those up and coming birders? Take your time. Enjoy it. Don't rush to tick it off. Don't rush. You have a whole, you've got a lot of time. Enjoy birding and just going out. And if you see the same bird again, that's fine. You're going to see these birds because you're going to be persistent at it, but take your time and don't just go and say, ah, tick it off. That's my favorite bird. And then go to the next one, tick it off and go to the next one. Take the time to really enjoy the moment and enjoy the birds that are around you. Even if you've seen them a million times, just, just do it. And you'll find, you'll find them. You'll, you'll find all of them. So that's my advice. Great advice, Chris. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great rest of your night. Thank you. You guys too. The stories behind rare birds are often fascinating, and the Mount Lemmon pine flycatcher is no exception. It was great to learn all about the details of this individual bird, and it's even better to know that if a national rarity shows up in Arizona, Chris will undoubtedly have the lowdown on it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.